Welcome everyone to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes, my co-host is Bricky, and our co-co-host today is Kirioth, and we are going to be learning about some 40k Navy ships and stuff like that, like we said in the previous episode. But before we do, if you enjoy today's episode of the podcast, head over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get lots of great stuff for supporting your favorite 40k podcast. Bricky has some super fun stuff to do. Bricky, take it. All right, part one, here you go. This episode of Adeptus Ridiculous is brought to you by Factor. Factor is the meal to your doorstep service that I have used multiple times in the past because they have something very, very important that the other ones do not have, and that is called actually being pretty damn tasty. It is a fantastic way to have a variety of meals packed with the proper amount of macro and micronutrients listed for you to make sure you are properly fitting these into whatever diet you have. It's extremely convenient, has little to no cleanup, does not require you to meal prep either, and can be heated up and enjoyed extremely fast. The menus are updated weekly with 27 plus meals and 34 add-on options, along with a ton of other various dietary restrictions, such as chef's favorite, vegan, vegetarian, keto, and calorie smart. It is extremely handy to just slot factor in to whatever daily nutrition you're you're looking for, and you can check it out in the description with code POG Adeptus DEC60. POG Adeptus December 60, basically. That will get you 60% off your first box. So check the description and hit go.factor75.com with code POG Adeptus DEC60 for that 60% off your first box. And thank you for sponsoring this video. Okay, part two time. Now that, that, that the, the ad is, uh, is completed and all, all is good. Good. Um, some people have made it very aware or made me very aware that I have missed a couple of our posters from way back when. Um, okay. Five, in fact, I have missed. I have missed the OG Guardsman gal one. I have missed the OG Sisters of Battle with the Doge Van Dyer in the background. Oh. I missed the for the Neanderer. Catboy Guardsman <laughs> one. <laughs> was that uh, how intentional? did you miss that, dude? Was that uh, intentional? Be honest. Uh, the, the the name of it or missing it? Missing, missing it. it. No comment. Um, <laughs> I missed out on the Ultra Marines one with the with the big ass legs, loyal to the core, and most importantly, I missed out on the Tech Priest holding the toaster. I'm actually. Ah shocked i forgot about that one and i have received many emails to the merchandise support uh <laughs> email asking where is the toaster tech priest and i it is all on my fault it is those are all now available once again um they're on their hey. store orchid.com in the description and there's a black friday sale for 20 percent off if you buy two or more don't want to chat on it too much because we had not had this episode but yeah i want to let you all know and uh and yeah okay um well, hold oh, on. oh, Shy, Shy, Shy has a, a thing. surprise for you. Oh, Shy sorry. has a I'm big just... surprise. Shy says, oh, speaking right. of posters, uh, we have a new one for this month already. And it I, I feel like this really continues the theme of being nice to Bricky. Because the last one was the Yes Boss one, is the Chad Ogren. And I feel like this one really blows that, that one is... out of the water. That is not what she typed in the chat. I, that is not what, what she yes, typed. Yes, that is exactly what she typed. <laughs> that has Come been on. extremely like niceified. That one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, shy, go ahead and go ahead and show. Oh me. my God! Jesus Christ! Look at that! It's it's amazing. Oh the, no! Holy! This shit. is oh just God. peak forty k. Wow. Right? Wow! If if this was the Space Wolves, then maybe I wouldn't hate them so much. Dude, that's that's something. <laughs> Whose idea was this? This was all Shai's idea. <laughs> <laughs> and once she told me about it, I was like, I was like, Chef's kiss. This is brilliant. This is really good. <laughs> this you... is really gonna make Bricky's day. He's gonna see this and just snap. That mm. you you really couldn't have gotten worse. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying gone to worse. You could well, you could have worse. you could have gone worse, but like worse enough to the point where it can be printed and sold. 
I don't know. <laughs> you could have gone worse. That's going to sell like hotcakes, and you know it. You 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 you, you want to you want to bet on that one, DK? I, I, I bet it will. I bet it will. I, you you weirdly, think you think that like furry big boobed space wolf isn't gonna sell? Are you telling me with... that furries have disposable income? Yes. Have you seen some of those fursuits? <laughs> I was gonna say. If, also, have you seen <laughs> how much art furries commission? Yeah, Jesus yeah. Christ. Like, I reckon a good chunk of them will have already paid for something exactly like this anyway, which in some cases might mean the market has been harmed a little bit. I reckon, though, this needs to be made more interesting. Do the extras, but any that don't sell, DK has to buy and then wallpaper a room with. Ooh. Oh, uh, see, I would, but I'm, I'm, I'm renting where I live right now, so I can't really bust up the walls and, like, wallpaper it. That's oh, a good that's fine, DK. You, just you use tape. Just... Yeah, just use just tape, use or just, or just get I'll, like, I'll just get like some sheets of, of put like the sheets of plywood. Strips up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the thing. Get sheets of plywood. You put them on the plywood, and then you just lean the plywood against the wall. If you've covered oh. the whole thing, you won't even know that it's not the wall itself. So really, yeah, good call, is, good call. there's no to, excuse for this. <laughs> to to all of our furry fans, we have no issue with what you partake in. However, I do have an issue no. with what Shy has shown me. Yeah, enjoy what you enjoy. Don't don't be don't be ashamed of the stuff you love. As long as is it's it, not legal. It, well, you can be a little ashamed. Um, okay, we're we're we're, 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 something, we're getting off topic a little we're bit because we, we have a the lot recording. to cover. We do, we do. You so Kiriath, I'm told that you're going to be covering every single Imperial ship <laughs> in full detail this wow, episode. Wow, even right? the minute ones from the books that people have I... never heard of. Is it? Are you allowed to quit this early in? Is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> If, no, if you were, were if you were going to quit, it was going to happen when she showed the poster. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I feel like the limit has already been reached, and we're we're sailing well beyond that point now. We're we're <laughs> going to be covering quite a few ships, not all of them, not all of them, because there's there's a lot, there's a lot. We're only doing the Imperial Navy, which, by the way, doesn't cover the Space Marine fleets. So that's they have their own ships. We're only covering the Imperial Navy, and there's already. A, I'm trying to. What is the best way? To, a metric shed load of these, <laughs> and that's not including ones that technically aren't even used anymore. Including, and I'm just going to throw this out here now because we're going to come to it later. And I love the fact the fact this exists. Battleships with no void shields. That was a thing once. What? But we're going to save that until a bit later. Yeah, it's. Don't worry. They made up for it. It's fine. Okay. So yeah, following last week. We're going to go through some of the the more fun, the more interesting ships of the Imperial Navy and the ridiculous weapons that they have put on them. Um, there were some stats that you guys gave last week, so we'll just quickly reiterate a couple of them. There was one thing that didn't come up, right? I'm doing the thing that I said other people would do with missing stuff out. Are you, there is... are you telling me <laughs> that I may have made something wrong? Not He's really, no. It's one of those version of the comment section, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's one of those cases where someone has been writing for Games Workshop or writing for Black Library, and they got enthusiastic and they may have got a number wrong, because you are right in when you said that like battleships can be up to eight kilometers long. There was one book, um, the name of which I I forget off the top of my head. Oh no, there we go. There, found it. It's in my notes. The Wolf Pack by uh, Gordon Rennie. I've not read it myself, personally, but uh, it it is described in there that an Imperial Escort is 30 kilometres long. What? <laughs> an, <laughs> an escort ship? Yes. <laughs> that, 30 kilometres? What? It, it's fairly... It's, it's kind of... It's fairly like... Uh, I think it's been decided on that that's not correct. That that was either a typo or an author misunderstanding the scale of the ships in 40k. But just that's for a cute. minute there, just for a minute there, there was uh, there was talk of a 30 kilometer long escort ship, which is kind of impressive given that previously, I think the longest like actual battleship would be the Gloriana class, which is like 19 kilometers long, 19 to 20. So a, th wow. a 30 kilometers long one, bit ridiculous, bit mad. Generally speaking, though, battleships up to eight kilometers, which is still absurdly big. Like, mm -hmm. it's still stupid, but it's not 30 kilometers stupid. It's not as wide as a planet. It's Yeah, it's not like, <laughs> it's not like actually, how does this thing even exist structurally? Like, that's, yeah, how do you that's even getting to the point of absurdity. That? Like, you have to build that in space. 
Oh, they're all they're all built in space anyway. I That's was about how, to say, yeah, yeah, they're all built in like in like docks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They're all built in uh, in orbiting like orbital shipyards, um, and they're they're put together there and then set out for presumably a life of death and destruction and everyone on board dying horribly, which mm. is pretty pretty standard for 40k. One might say that's a bit grim dark, eh? Okay. It could be. <laughs> okay. I was okay. gonna I was gonna chip in there with it could be classed as ridiculous, but then you went worse. So I I don't think we can even finish that off now. Which nothing is worse than this podcast. Come on now, let's not be crazy <laughs> here. He's got a point. <laughs> the, the the Discord has just found out about the new poster and they're they're going ham with it, so it's completely acceptable. Oh, let's go. <laughs> they're excited to buy it, eh? Oh, that's, that wasn't the word I was going to use. Two hundred right. of them. Ah, let's go. I reckon let's let's go small to big. Let's go small to big and do the do the really really fun gigantic silly ships last because it. I feel like it's worth kind of building up because you start out with really quite small ships when it comes mm-hmm. to the escort ships. You've got frigates and you've got destroyers, which are Little teeny tiny things compared to the battleships, like two to six vessels in a squadron, and they are mainly there to serve as a screen for other capital ships against torpedoes and attack craft. <laughs> so they're there to lessen the blow to try and get rid of some of the uh, get rid of some of the attack craft and shoot down some of the torpedoes, or quite possibly just take a few hits. To stop. I was going to say that that sounds more <laughs> yeah. reasonable for the Imperium. It's just like ah, instead of instead of actually trying tactics, let's just throw a bunch of ships at it. If they get hit, meh, meh, meh. That's what they're the, there for. <laughs> it's. I mean, it, I was about to say it kind of reminds me back in like Mass Effect Three. There's this part where some of the Geth like block the shots of the Corian fleet by using their smaller craft. And that's where my mind first went because I'm like, oh, the Imperium would do that willingly. But then I guess, I guess in a more realistic sense, they would fly around and like use their guns to shoot torpedoes and stuff because torpedoes are a massive problem when it comes to those like really big capital ships. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, torpedoes. Torpedoes are a massive, like a massive amount of damage to capital ships. And generally speaking, like the so the the escorts. Are like between 750 to 1.5 kilometers in length. So when it comes to like torpedo broadsides and stuff, they're not quite as bad as they could be. Whereas if something like a like a full-on battleship is hit by a full spread, then it's gonna cause a vast amount of damage and probably take a good amount of the armaments out at the same time, making the battleship way weaker when it comes to actually dealing out damage. Oh no, my bloods and my crypts. <laughs> yeah, the the gunnery crews they they have they have a bad time of it. The indentured ones, the the, the slaves, they do the not gangers. have fun. Yeah. So to give a little bit of a, uh, a like an example as to the different weaponry. So in terms of like the destroyers and the frigates, the Cobra destroyer, which is something that is in Battlefleet Gothic, um, that has a uh, a torpedo tube, so that can get in quick, fire torpedoes off a of capital ships. And then get out. Whereas something like a Firestorm frigate is armed with a lance battery. So instead of having like a bunch of guns on either side of the ship, it's got a lance battery on the front, which has like a limited firing arc, but it's like a more powerful single shot weapon. Um, and the Cobra is 15,000 crew, 1.5 kilometers long. The Firestorm is 25,000 crew and 1.8 kilometers long. So there's still. For like escort ships, for small ships that just are there to kind of screen, dive in, kind of some sit back in the gun line, making sure that anything that breaks through is hit with like a lot of firepower. They're still really big compared to literally. That's still massive. Yeah, it's still a lot, and it's still like twenty five thousand people on what is effectively an escort ship. Yeah, escort so it, cruiser, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's Oof. it's just the numbers are because it's forty k, yeah. so massively inflated and and crazy. Well, it's forty k. It's the Imperium who just don't 
give a fuck about oh, losing yeah. 25,000 people. Pfft, that's not even a drop in the bucket. I, yeah. was just, I was just about to say the Americans lo- love, if there's anything the Americans love, it's to have sex. Because I just I just replaced the Imperium or humanity with the Americans. <laughs> Despite despite all, but there's always there's always so many goddamn people that like, oh yeah, it's just a light cruiser, you know? We'll throw it in the five figure crew range. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. I mean, it's at the point now with with the Imperium that people are they're they're just expendable compared to the machinery they have, compared to it's things like loading torpedo tubes, which I know you covered last episode. But there are auto loaders. Like there are things that allow torpedoes to be loaded, not by using, you know, thousands of indentured people that have been just taken off world against their will. But the fact is, it's way cheaper and way easier to maintain, and way easier to just use a bunch of humans than it is to use expensive auto loader machinery because that stuff's rare and it can't be manufactured as easily, and it takes more maintenance. Whereas if you lose 5,000 people because a torpedo falls to the ground and blows up and wipes out, like, a room oh, full of idiots, you just go to the next planet and pick up another 5,000. It's fine. Who cares? Has, has that happened, by the way, where a torpedo is just, whoops, we weren't doing it right, <laughs> blew up the ship? I mean, it's got to, right? It's, it's 40k. <laughs> it's got to be like a daily occurrence, surely. Mm. I thought I, th- I thought for a second you might be doing like the whole like this recruits is a ferric slug feel the weight Mass Effect two thing where you fire the torpedo and it just goes right past the ship, and then like it misses and then there's the planet below. It's like, <laughs> I said it's happened in real submarines more than once. Like that's a real life thing that happens where people fuck up loading a torpedo and boom, congratulations I mean, you sunk the submarine. I believe it. Oh jeez! It's a pretty, it's pretty big ass um, uh, bomb. Words, yeah. Super heavy yeah. munition that you've That's got to get in just I'm the right for. spot. Like, <laughs> it's it's got to be. Oh wow! Oh Kursk! Oh That's, okay. no! Yeah, no, it was yeah, a yeah, yeah. Ship. Too oh, oh. No. I'd forgotten what it which which one it was, but yeah. So, <laughs> oh dear me! But this this is the thing, right? The Kursk mm. submarine disaster, 118 personnel on board were killed. That's the entire crew. 25,000 people on a frigate in 40k, and they're just sent in. Just go. In you go. Let's go. You've you yeah. got to get in there, do your job, and if you all die, then it's Whatever. fine. There's like, we have so many planets and so many people. Life is cheaper than literally anything else for the for the Imperium. So the course was a faulty weld on a 65 to 76 kit practice torpedo, leading to an explosion of high test peroxide and secondary detonation of five to seven oh, torpedo no. warheads. Oh, Jesus! That's awful. That's I'm, I'm a, yikes! I must say, like it's interesting because the mishandling of a torpedo in a sub like that is one thing, but considering that the heavy munitions on like a destroyer capital class ship in 40k is the size of like a small train. I, I wonder how the, the mishandling of that ends oh. up. <laughs> oh, God. Takes out the it's... whole ship and a couple of escort ships next to it. Then, I, I, then again, I don't know, because given the sheer scale of them, like, given the, just the absolute size of a, of a, especially, like, a capital ship in 40K, yeah, the torpedoes are the size of a train, but a battleship can be up to eight kilometers long. Like, it would do a load of damage, sure, probably blow out part of the hull and you'd lose a big chunk of, of crew. But then again, is it going to be that life-threatening for a ship of that size? It might not be that bad. It might be like, the smaller the ship, the worse it is. So if you do oh, it sure. in like a Cobra class, then that's it, you've lost a ship. You know, the, the, the torpedo is dropped, everyone is gone. But when you get up to, when you get up to something like a like a cruiser or a grand cruiser or a or a battleship it's like well it that sucks and, yeah yeah you, it's you, like you well, got to go back to port for repairs but it probably wouldn't be like the ship is destroyed type of deal why yeah, even well, bother which is having the gang to think about why even bother having the gang warfare when 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 the other gang could just drop the warhead and and wipe out <laughs> the entire clan 
<laughs> a bit of bit of uh, bit of sabotage from I was going to say like lower level politics. I don't think that's really classed as politics, is it? It's just gang warfare. But you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, our, our one of one of our guys went and uh, and decided to rub butter on all their hands, and then there's like, oh no, butterfinger is like, I need to wash <laughs> oh, this off, God. commissar. And they're like, no, get to work. And they slip and they drop the thing in the blow. <laughs> 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 I was what the fuck that, I thought you were making a siren noise for a second, but then I realized you were doing like the hot potato thing. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, all right. So when we move up from the uh, from the smaller the smaller ships, the cor- the destroyers, the frigates, there's also corvettes as well, which are just kind of in between the uh, destroyers and the frigates. There are heavy frigates. There's not a lot of information on those. Those are like a midway point between the frigates and the light cruisers which is where you start to get some of the like a bit more in terms of their in terms of their armament and like their their crew complement tends to be bigger they are also quite a bit longer as well so the dauntless class light cruiser for instance four and a half kilometers long already so you're already getting into like really significant ship sizes sixty five thousand crew on that as well um, the Endeavour, which is another class of light cruiser, you're up to 3.8 kilometers long and 67,000 crew. So it's it like you really quickly get into the point where you're like close to fairly close to like battleship sizes because there's a few yeah. battleships that are only like five kilometers long. So Jesus. by the time you've left the really small ships behind, it's already getting to the stage where you have these like pretty sizable vessels yeah there we go the dauntless is it's it it's just such a good ah, looking yes. ship it looks so good even i've seen that one before the, well, um, before i saw the trailer anyway r- remind me cruisers are much larger than corvettes right corvettes are the small ones yeah okay. yeah so these are like these are like about just like over half over half over two times the length of of the of the smaller ships like the the, the smaller the smaller escorts, um, and the we're really getting to the stage where the Dauntless, the Dauntless is like it's a scout craft, really, <laughs> but it's still covered in guns. So it's got weapons yeah. batteries on either side. Like the the screenshot there, you can see that there's what there's seven, is it six? Yeah, so there's six macro batteries on each side, and it has torpedo tubes as well. So it's technically a scout vessel. But it's still, it's still like heavily armed, and it has lances too. So it's like it's fully kitted out to murder stuff. And a four and a half kilometer long vessel is is kind of the kind of the scout side of things. Which is why why would you? It's the same thing, I guess, as the Warhound Scout Titan. Technically, yes, it is a scout. But also, realistically, it's covered in so many guns that it would reduce most things to just rubble immediately. Yes, the the, the Warhound Scout Titan, of course. Yeah. Of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah. I love how it looks like the guns on the side would totally hit the, the front of the ship. It's it's best not to examine a lot of that stuff too closely. <laughs> there, there are a lot of like it's tanks and stuff say. where it's like, I am almost certain the guns on the side would hit the front of that ship but ah, it's fine it's 40k who cares there are so many oh. instances of weapon is a little too close to a part of <laughs> of hull yeah like across the board yeah mm-hmm. also i love that uh, a ship manned by 65,000 people is a scout ship that's insane it's, it's so many people to just send out to see what's happening it's obviously still you know very very capable in terms of in terms of actual oh, fighting yeah. but i just i just love it i love that 40k has these absurd like gigantic ships by any other standard or gigantic vehicles and they're just you know it's a scout vessel it's fine it's not yeah, by, it's not look at it it's clearly not by, a scout by vessel by 40k and imperium standards that is a lightly armed scout ship when like i'm sure some of the grander ships are just like blistering with guns everywhere well within the same class you've also got the endeavor class light cruiser which it's like it's kind of like a heavy escort for capital ships and the uh the endeavor class has got 
so much in the way of large weapons that it's about the same firepower as a full cruiser. Wow. So it's still like pretty much the same as the as the Dauntless in some ways. It's actually a little bit shorter, but it has more crew because it has heavier weapons attached to it. Right. So, so it's it's like crew. Yeah, it's it's kind of a threat to full capital ships despite being slightly smaller than the scout version of that class. Damn. I was going to say, I'm surprised because that, uh, that screenshot, there's there's plenty of space on that forward battering ram for more guns. And to think that they have the restraint to not load up more guns on that front battering ram is just amazing. Restraint. Well done, Imperium. No, 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 no. You see, you say that, but that front battering ram is in fact used for battering. Ah. Can't yeah, have any not... guns to, to <laughs> cause the structural integrity of your battering ram to not work. I'm I'm pretty positive there is a, a right. genuine use of smash into enemy in order to rip apart ship and prow. I keep oh, yeah. forgetting that yep. uh, in a lot of void battles, they do indeed ram their ship into other yeah. ships. I do forget that they are literal battering rams. Yeah, the oh, uh, yeah. the the, uh, <laughs> the the Imperial Navy ships especially. They they are made with that prow specifically because sometimes you just gotta ram someone out of the way. You've just gotta <laughs> do it. Some of them are like better for it than others because they do actually have weapons that are protruding from the front of the of the of the ship, which obviously means if you if you ram someone when you've got a big old cannon sticking out of the front, then that cannon is probably gonna be out of action. But a lot of them have got that kind of more recessed if there is a weapon like under the front of the prow so that when you slam into someone it's way worse for them than it is for you and yeah the endeavor class looks weird it looks like a gun oh. that you would hold yeah it looks like a pistol or a shotgun it's not a good looking ship no nope. <laughs> but it does you know it can potentially threaten capital ships so it's cool at least well, it got that going that's for such it a which bro, is it's a, bro it's a can opener Oh, you know what? Yeah, yeah you're right. It's a you're fucking right. can opener, dude. It I'll is. be honest, I hadn't realized how can opener-y it was. That's pretty that's pretty yep. bad, isn't it? Yeah. Well, so you said the Endeavor is like a bigger threat than the Dauntless, right? Yes, like, just due to the that's... type of weapons it's got. Okay, it's so weird because it looks like the Dauntless has way more guns and shit on it than the Endeavor does. So the Dauntless has got, like, macro batteries along the side, whereas the Endeavor has got, like... They're basically just larger larger versions of those weapons, so they're oh, just okay. more powerful. It, I think it also is the fact that, like, the Dauntless has something going for it in that it got picked to be in, in something, <laughs> so it got oh, proper okay. updated art, whereas the Endeavor did not, did not okay. get that. So it's still going off... I don't know if that's from Space Fleet or from Battlefleet Gothic or whether that's shown up in a white dwarf somewhere, that picture. But it's it's definitely uh like of its time. <laughs> like I feel like right. the the really like the ships that have really kind of lasted and have shown up in multiple games and have shown up in fiction and stuff, they tend to get better, more updated artwork. Whereas there's a few there's a few pictures where you can tell that it was drawn a long time ago. And yeah. never really got any more love after that kind of initial first sketch put down. <laughs> yeah. So the Dauntless gets to look super cool and the Endeavor gets to keep looking like a can opener. <laughs> oh, there we go. So the Endeavor does look a bit better in uh in that form. A bit. A little bit. It's, <laughs> a it's little still bit. a can it's opener. Still, <laughs> it's still a can opener. <laughs> it's it's honestly the, the eagle head that, that kills it because it looks like it's going to open the can. Yep, it does. It, it yeah, really does. it really does. Imagine the damage that eagle head's going to do when it rams someone, though. It's going to be great. Oh. You squawk know, at them as it's going through. <laughs> I don't know if it will. It's it's eight pointed downwards. I think it's just going to flip the the uh, flip the ship end over end. <laughs> if it rams something, though, that eagle uh, beak could really grip onto stuff. And as you're like reversing out, it'll just grab stuff and just tear it out. You know. There it you could, go. That it's... could cause a lot of damage. Actually, around, though. you know what? It's shaped like a can opener, ram in, then, like, 
orient the ship different so that it's like tilted up and then drive down so that it tears the hull open like a can. It was yeah. clearly planned that way. Yeah. We've solved it. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> oh, it's Shai's, Function over form. Yeah. Come on. Shai, it's like it looks like can opener because this Ricky when it rams the Eldar ship, a whole lot of opening is going to happen. You, you, that that is impressive thinking that it's going to be able to ram an Eldar ship. It's an Eldar yeah. ship. Those things move so fast. I was going to say Eldar defenses and batteries are probably so good that the Endeavor would never actually make it to be able to ram into the uh, Eldar ship, would it? Not, not even that. I think it's the speed. Well, yeah, there's the speed, sure. They're pretty They're pretty quick. The The smaller ships are... Well, I say they're pretty quick. They're not as quick as Eldar ships, but like the Endeavor has... like The max acceleration is 3.9G, so it's not... It's not like horrifically slow. It's just horrifically slow compared to, to the, the Eldar, Eldar, who can yeah. basically just ignore physics. They don't <laughs> care. The, the, El Space the Eldar magic. just fucking just fucking dab on you as they're doing circles and shooting you with bright lances. Yeah, the Eldar do rely <laughs> just on their speed quite a bit, yeah. mocking you the entire time. You got they got that um ah uh, crap. What's what's the what's the the, the hoity toity Japanese laugh again, DK? Oh, the Ojo Sama laugh. Yeah, oh. the, the, yeah, exactly. I, I I can never imagine Craft World Eldar not laughing like that. Ho, 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 and they spin around, yep. killing yeah, you. Yep. I I I I got that. Yep. So if we move up from the light cruisers, which I know we've only talked about a couple, but there's, I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine versions of those. We don't need to know what all of them do. It's all roughly that. Somewhere between being fast and scouting and being able to take out a capital ship, that's what cruisers do. Light cruisers. Moving up to actual cruisers, there is again a significant number of these and the like the tonnage and the size goes way up at this point. So these aren't the uh, these aren't the battle cruisers, these are just the cruisers. The dictator class, which is very on the nose in terms of what they've uh, <laughs> what they've described that as. Um, we're at like five kilometers long at this point, eighty five thousand crew, and it is wow. full of attack craft. So they've taken out the uh, the lance decks, which we previously used oh. for lance lances are essentially gigantic las guns. Um, so they've taken out the capacity for the las the the lances. And instead, they've refitted it so it's got hangers for more attack craft. It's still got macro weapon batteries along the side, and it's still got torpedo capabilities. But it it's there to vomit out a shed load of of uh, <laughs> of small ships to go and mess with people. I was about right, to say so th these are the wasp nest ships, basically. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So what what is what is that scepter looking thing that's coming out of the front of it is that just for more ramming damage or is that actually I, like a gun or what is I that i believe on the i believe on the dictator that is that is like a, an actual ram because it doesn't have a front mounted lance on it um so i think that's what that is some of this is going off my kind of now a little bit rusty uh armada knowledge to be honest also, yeah, Shai points out 15,000 pilots. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's a lot of pilots. I mean, if if the whole purpose of this thing is to, like Bricky said, just be like the wasp nest ship and just spit out and vomit uh, attack craft, I mean, that makes sense that there's 15,000 pilots on it. Yeah. Uh, but it, it seems like the ram fun. thing is, is a little wasted on this ship because it doesn't seem like this thing is supposed to be like ramming stuff it's just supposed to vomit out attack ships right so why would you put a big old ram thing on this ship why would you put it on like the the can opener ship i feel like with this it's a case of because it's lacking lances because it doesn't have that same kind of armor piercing capability that quite a few of the other ships do if something gets close enough to it then your best bet is to torpedo it and ram it if it's in the right position for it because the one of the things I quite like about the design of all these ships is that it's relatively sensible, in a way. Like, if you want to have a bunch of attack craft, you have to lose a weapon or two, because mm, you can't yeah, yeah. fit both. Um, and I would guess if it's like a... If a bunch of the cruisers are essentially the same template, if you're going to take off 
everything that would power the gun on the front to fit more attack craft, you may as well stick something on there, because it's not going to have any effect on it, other than yeah. if you really need to ram someone, then you've got a big old spike on the front, which is only going to help that, so... Disagree, True. Kiriath. Instead, you remove the battering ram section, and you just make it this giant gaping mouth. Put the guns back on it, and then it's like <laughs> giant bay doors that just open up and it literally vomits craft. Oh, all right, that would be. Mm. No, you're right. That'd be cooler. That would be way better. Coming from the so front. It's literally vomiting yeah. crafts. Oh, that'd yeah. be great. It can still broadside people, but then it just opens the front up, and it's just like, <laughs> and it's all just fucking oh, fighter decks, like like yeah. 19 <laughs> floors of uh, yeah. of ships. You could and you could make it super Imperium like and make that just like a a, a, a big eagle head, but the but the beak opens and the bleh. beak opens and all that. Oh, oh no, but but no, even better. The the actual bay doors that open are shaped like wings. So when it opens up, it's got this giant dual wing thing on the sides. Oh, and it's like they're literally coming out of an Aquila. Oh yeah. Yeah, let's mm -hmm. go. Imperium I love to humanity. The <laughs> Praise the Emperor. <laughs> I was just going to say, Shy has pointed out as well that aircraft, d depending on the aircraft, not much in the way of range. And like attack oh. craft, probably not able to just fly across half a, half a, I was going to say battlefield. You know what I mean? Ha halfway mm -hmm. across like an engagement to be able to get to the enemy. So getting close, then chucking them out, and then probably need to hang back a little bit, but also be close enough that they can come back and refuel and rearm and so on. And kind of a mix of. A mix of all different stuff. Yeah. How As much to why you want to stick those a little, um, do one of those little fighters have? Like, uh, how ha long I... can they fly around and... Bzz, 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 bzz. So the Fury, which is uh, an interceptor as opposed to a bomber... Um, oh, I could have sworn I had this written down. No, this is one of the things I couldn't find out. When it comes to, like, super technical, like, fuel consumption and stuff, there isn't... A huge amount of information out there. Oh, okay. But because I we're did assuming genuinely like, try and uh, find that. <laughs> it's like you know, like in in real life uh, fighter jets. It's not like they have uh, infinite fuel where they can go cross country. It's like you kind of got to stay near ish uh, a base so you can refuel. Because obviously, you know. Yeah, you got you got to get you got to get close, or you're going to end what up running out of. What the fuck is that, Shy? <laughs> yeah. What the, the fuck is that? Miniature. <laughs> It's not great, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, great was not the first word that came to mind when I looked at that. This entire time uh, I was thinking of some kind of, like, comparison for it. Like, that looks like this X dumb thing, and I, I genuinely can't think of anything right now. It looks like a termite with claws to me. It's really... I've genuinely forgotten which which cruiser I was going to go on to next, purely from looking at that. It's... <laughs> It's actually destroyed my brain. It is mind-boggling. Why has it got pincers? I mean, I suppose in that <laughs> way, hey, at least they've kept like the RAM faithful. Clearly Damn, that wants to get yeah. real close to things, doesn't it? Look at it. it it's to, yeah, catch, the, it's to catch those pesky Eldar. They, they fly away from your RAM and you're like... Ah. <laughs> 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 got him, got him. <laughs> <Got 'em. laughs> oh, oh, my man. God. I like the drill, though. I, I kind of wish that they, they kept the drill on the dictator instead of just the... I, I mean, I guess that thing on the front in the in the good picture could, like, just spin rapidly, too. But uh, it, it doesn't look like a drill to me. I'm going to choose to believe that it does and just take that as a blanket <laughs> upgrade on... Hell the, yeah. ...the flying lobster or whatever the hell that... I, oh, my God. It kind of is a flying Hell yeah, just Mr. Just Mr. Krabs. the tail. <laughs> Is that a crabby panty? <laughs> oh god! Right, we're gonna okay, we're gonna move on. We're gonna mm. move on. I hate to think what the old model for the oh no no this one isn't too bad. No, I was incorrect. I forgot that this does have an old model and it is terrible. So the Dominator cruiser, which has nothing in the way of like the whole attack craft thing. Instead, it has a Nova cannon, Ooh, which what's is a Nova cannon. So, <laughs> the the Nova Cannon is an amazing weapon. It 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 does like Ooh, a like a kind of cool. gravi like a gravity acceleration thing to force whatever projectile it's firing to a close to the speed of light. 
Oh! And then when it hits something, it obliterates it. Holy is basically, shit! That's, that, that's like the kind of the cliff notes. It's... <laughs> The Nova Cannon is one of the most exceptionally powerful starship weapons employed by the military force Superior Man. They fire massive, gravitically impelled warheads that can unleash fleet-consuming plasma explosions, gravitational disruptions, or even warp rifts. Wow. They're pretty good. Hey, pretty what's good. up, guy? What's up, Eldar? Can't catch you? That's fine. I'll just let the <laughs> gates of hell go and kill you for me. That's what happens when you fire this thing? I'm assuming that's Jesus. the plasma one, Christ. where it like fires a yeah. torrent of plasma. There's there's a few different versions. So there's a Mars pattern Nova Cannon, um, which is, it's just one long, hun like literally hundreds of meters long gun that fires a shell at like relativistic velocities. <laughs> and then when it hits, it explodes. It like, explodes... With more force than dozens of plasma warheads, so that's one version of it. Then there's the riser pattern Nova Cannon, which has got like an unstable plasma-based bomb attached to it. So it's basically various flavors of awful, but it does have it does have different ammunition. So there's Doppler shells, so you can fire it, and it will bounce waves off the hulls of ships and expose things that are hidden or cloaked. There's electromagnetic shells, which are designed to wreck sensors and enemy communication. There are grav shells, which implode in on themselves and create a miniature black hole, which might actually be <laughs> what that picture's showing, yeah. looking at it. Um, and then there's uh, <laughs> then there's rift shells. So those are like a vortex torpedo, but, but worse. They create a temporary rift in the warp. Um, oh boy, so you can have a Nova Cannon firing miniature warp rifts if you really want to. Jesus. For a second there, I thought you said the first cannon was a marzipan, and I was like, ooh, almond. <laughs> That's my terrible pronunciation. But yeah, the Dominator Cruiser has got one of them. <laughs> it's got one of those so, on, and it's it flanking like weapons. A very important thing, this Nova Cannon, and it seems very... Why are you putting it at the front where it is most vulnerable? You need vast amounts of power to use it. It's it's like it requires a lot of power to to be able to fire. Um, I was going to say like it's the, so exposed. Oh yeah, why why is that mean it should be in the front then? Yeah, can't you put that anywhere on the ship? Wouldn't it be better it put it in the back where all the plasma reactors are? Yeah, it's probably down to the complete inability or refusal of anyone to deviate from any design ever. Honestly, That's true. There, it, there's, there's, always the, there's always the cop-out answer of, this is the way the STC built it, so we're not yeah. going to change it. You would probably really put that in the middle of like a weird-shaped ship so that it was protected at all times, given how incredibly powerful and dangerous and rare and all of that stuff it is, and put it you know a bit closer to the power source and stuff, but... I don't think there's any STC for that, so what you get is the gun sticking out of the front of the prow, which was designed specifically for ramming things, and you're going to like it, because you've got no other choice, basically. Shai says it's also insanely dangerous to even the ship itself because of the destruction it can cause over a vast area. A Nova Cannon projectile is not armed until a fraction of a second after firing, though by that time it will have already traveled tens of thousands of kilometers through space. Uh, for those captains which do mount them, a well-used Nova Cannon can be a terrifying weapon and a psychological tool. Mm, it's damn, these quality. Crazy. Yeah, they're they're amazing. Uh, they're one of the coolest weapons. They do come on the Dominator Cruiser, which also has a like ridiculous broadside capability. So there's there's something that I uh, that I I noted down for this, where there was a Dominator cruiser called the Hammer of Justice, which found itself between two Chaos cruisers, and it fired its broadsides at both and crippled both of them immediately. Wow. So the one ship was being flanked by two other ships, fired its broadsides at them, and annihilated them. They basically have a similar kind of broadside capability as full-on battleships, the Retributor battleship, battleship specifically, and uh, and it's just a cruiser. It's just a cruiser. <laughs> it's not even like one of the biggest ships out there, but uh, it's got a Nova Cannon and it can destroy 
equivalent cruisers easily, which is solid. Jesus. So why don't why don't they uh, use more of these? Like they should they should just make a fleet of these things if they take out chaos ships that easily and it has a fucking uh, singularity cannon on it. Like this seems but... like it should be like the hallmark of the fleet. Nova cannon, larger, like longer recharge rate. And also, if something's faster and has more escort, then it makes it more difficult to hit the ships that could hit the the Dominator. And it's all the usual thing of, you could just send one thing in, but depending on the formation of the enemy fleet and what they've got access to, you could have a really good ship or like 10 really good ships, but if there's something in there that counters it just a little bit, then you're in oh, yeah. serious trouble. Yeah. Damn. Still very cool, though. We do have to mention quickly the Gothic Cruiser, because it's... I mean, the name is legendary. Uh, They are extremely slow, (laughs) really slow, but they do have lances on them. So they've got lance decks, and they are able to do a shed load of extreme damage with those. They're not as long range or as devastating as the Novik Cannon, but... They are longer range than like the macro batteries, and they do a horrendous amount of like hull damage and stuff. And yeah, the 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 Gothic is a little bit different because it has lances on either side of the ship. A lot of the ships seem to have lances either on turrets or affixed to the prow, so they have a limited firing arc. Whereas the Gothic can hit a lot more stuff on either side of the ship with those weapons, which makes it a little bit a little bit different, a little bit special. And lances are just like pew pew space lasers, right? Yeah, they're basically gigantic las cannons. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Just making sure. Longer range, more damage, just just more hardcore. The same way that yeah. like when we were talking about the Titans where it's like, this is a Titan weapon, and then the bigger the Titan gets, just the bigger the weapon gets, but it's basically the same thing. Yeah. It's It goes all the way up to gigantic lances with incredible long range that are basically super-sized last cannons. Lucky for us, there's no, there's no such thing as a laser that can be too big. You can always make not. a bigger laser. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Shy said they're also kind of sniper ships because apparently lances are long range specific and reload real slowly. So if you get real close to Gothic class, it's kind of fucked. Yep, that's um. If you remember, DK, the uh, Night Lord ship was a strike cruiser that had a massive front forward lance. And, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that was what they did to deal with, if I'm not mistaken, the battleship. Because the, they fired the uh, lances, among other things, at it, which popped its void shields and then sent all the drop pods in. Gotta set, gotta get the drop pods in. That's the. That, mm-hmm. It's your Astartes, you're an Astartes craft. You got one yep. major benefit, and that's your dudes. Yep. Mm. Gotta get in there quick, or things are gonna go bad for you. Yeah, especially like when a when a Night Lord's drop ship ends up on your ship, it's like, oh no, oh no. All right, next, yeah, next boat. Everyone What's loves a visit ship? by the Night Lords. It's fine. Um, so we've then got the battle cruisers and the grand cruisers. So battle cruisers are sort of between between the grand and normal cruiser sizes, and it's kind of a similar thing where they're not like they're not they're not escort class, but they're not quite full. They're not quite like full battleship. Um, size vessels well they're just that sort of size but in terms of their armaments um they're not a vast amount different to the cruisers themselves uh so things like the the armageddon class it was based on things from the cruiser class so it's a battle cruiser but it's not that much bigger than an actual normal cruiser because they used the lunar hull from the previous classification of ship. So these are like five kilometers long, about 100,000 crew, roughly. And again, it's that kind of mix of, there's a few that have got really good kind of ranged ability, having multiple lances on either side. There's a few that have got like really good close range ability or Nova cannons. Um, like the, the Mars class is really good for long range because it has two lances it has a nova cannon and it has attack craft to support it from a distance 
and the armor oh. Armageddon cannon lance positions and also torpedoes as well. So it's still got like a good amount of range. These are kind of like they're still like getting close to capital ship, but they're kind of a mid ground between the two. Mm-hmm. Sounds very well uh, weaponized. That's all. That's a shitload of weapons. It's just <laughs> one of them. It's like Jeez. it literally says in the like a couple of places. I found that it was referred to as like the poor man's retribution class battleship, which is the Overlord battle cruiser. Wow. So it's got a bunch of weapons on it. And it's kind of good, but yeah, it's, it's still it's, it's, want... it sounds it sounds like a wrecking ball. You still want to have an actual proper retribution class because that's just it's just better. It's, it's just mm. better doing it that way. But unfortunately, battleships are massively expensive and difficult to build, and <laughs> <You don't laughs> are really say. rare. <laughs> so sometimes you just got to go with the like not quite as good option. So are, 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 battle f- are battleships and destroyers similar? Destroyers are, are way down the list. Am destroyers I, are down of... with like corvettes and frigates. Crap. Am I thinking of... Oh, am I thinking of battle barges? Or is that an Astartes thing? Yeah, battle barges are the Astartes capital ships. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, never mind them. They they literally have their like own entire section of ships like the amount of variety that the imperium has when it comes to spacecraft is is kind of insane because the imperial navy has got a just a ton of them and then space marines have got their own lot which kind of have similar armaments but different focuses and there's more focus on boarding and stuff like that due to them having so many space marines around but it like it changes the function of the ships and stuff it's there's so much. There's so much, and there still isn't a tabletop Battlefleet Gothic game again. Anyway, I'm just going to not go into that rant, because that's <laughs> that's not what we're here for. Uh, but they we go to... Now. They should, absolutely. They're missing out on money. Mine, specifically. <laughs> that's not true. They're not missing out on my money. They've got no, loads of really it. No, they're really not. They've got... No. <laughs> so, between the battle cruisers and the full battle ships, we have grand cruisers, which are full oh boy. capital ships. And it's this is where you start getting into like seven and a half, eight kilometers long. They are basically <laughs> battleships, but just a little bit smaller, a little bit different. Um, like two decks of weapon batteries instead of a single deck. So the Avenger Grand Cruiser is one of the examples. Um, and it doesn't have a lot of like frontal armor, but it does have two decks of weapon batteries. So once it gets alongside something, it has so many guns that it can just pummel it into submission as long as it gets close enough. Wow, that is absolutely a stupid amount of guns on the side of this thing. No, Holy no, shit. St- stupid is not not if it works, buddy. Wow, oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> just in general. That is a silly amount of guns that this thing has. Like all of those little. Uh, I mean, they, they they look like pirate ship cannons to me, but I I know they're not. But th- there's just so many of them. I uh, I must <laughs> say it was a really interesting choice for the Imperium to put a butt plug at the front of their ship nose. Ah, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> the, that's it. the drill, man. That's the drill. Look at that shit. It looks like he's sticking in your ass. <laughs> oh, of... <sighs> hey, man. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. That's none of my business. Before we go into a couple of different battleship types. We should talk about the about the ironclad. Okay. And I I want to mention this because I love the fact that this exists. So an ironclad is like a there was a point between like sail powered ships and steam powered ships where there was a bit of experimentation in terms of like using metal on hulls and armoring up ships and the like and ironclads effectively ships that have a a, either a metal superstructure or have metal plating to give it extra armor. There was a point for the Imperium where void shield technology didn't exist. Now, every ship that we've talked about has got void shields of some capacity. Some have got a couple, yeah. some have got loads. You know, when you get up to battleships, then void shields are super powerful, but it depends on the power source being used and all that kind of thing. Okay. Ironclads were made 
before Void Shields existed. So they are Oof. like eight kilometer long battleships with no Void Shields whatsoever. So anything that hits it is just going to hit the ship. It's not going to hit the shields. The shields aren't going to wipe out and then stuff hits. They just take the hits and they are ironclads because instead of having void shields, they have meters worth of adamantium plate armor. So they're just... It, it's, it is, as its name says, it is clad in iron. Yes, it has just got meters thick armor all over it because oh boy. <laughs> no shields existed at that time. <laughs> yeah, how did that work out? I, I imagine there were a lot of ironclads that went down like that. Like ew. they've from from everything that I could find, they they don't seem to uh, really make them anymore for some reason. I can't imagine oh, why. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I can't wow. imagine. Seems like such a good design choice that. Why wouldn't you? Especially when you've got, you know, all these Xenos and Tau and Eldar and... Ah. <laughs> it's not It's not great when everyone else has got Void Shields and you've just got more Iron. metal. Yeah. They have been, they have been refitted a little bit, so some have got, like, planet killers or ship or station killer weapons that have just been attached to them because... From a significant enough range, no void shields shouldn't matter too much. Mm -hmm. But they have also just been braced and reinforced and thrown at enemy ships <laughs> on the basis that if it dies, it was going to die anyway. So yeah. we'll try and take someone out with it on the way down. <laughs> um, Jesus. I just, I love it. I love the fact that they did include that point, but like before void shields became a thing, they just had these, I'm assuming, extremely heavy ships. <laughs> Like I can't oh, imagine yeah. I can't imagine that they were like maneuverable in any way, but given that all their protection against enemy fire was just well, we have like ten meters of metal between <laughs> us and them. I'm sure it's fine. We'll be okay. Oof. We we can survive this. It's it's you okay. Imagine being stationed on an ironclad. <laughs> it's like, ah oh, yes, you've been uh, you've been designated to the ironclad. It's like, oh fuck. I'm so dead. I am What's that? dying. <laughs> What's that noise? Ah, don't worry about it. You'll get you'll get used to it. It's just the ship itself falling yep. apart around us. Yeah, you, it's you, you know when you move into a new house. Ricocheting off the hull. Yeah, you have a new house. You know, you have like your classic like new house noises where you hear like the creaks and the. It's just that you know. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the house is just settling. You know, the ship is just settling. Don't worry. It's. <laughs> So those are the old. Those are like the old battleships, the ironclads. They're the they're the ones that don't get don't really get used anymore uh, for good reason. Mm. The actual battleships, though, are where we get into the things that are like eight kilometers long and have you know up to like three million crew or whatever. <laughs> um, there's it's also where you start getting just uh, absurd amounts of of weaponry. So, like the Retribution class battleship, um, which is classed as a ship of the line. So, the design is all about getting alongside the enemy and giving it massive broadside fire. So, it is absolutely wow. plastered in guns. Yeah, it's a cool looking ship. That is, that is a ship. I, that, I actually like that one a lot. Yeah. Is that is that cool. a gun hanging from the bottom or is that like on the side and there's another one on the other side? It I looks believe... like it might be like a like a wing thing, yeah. Yeah. I believe that's off to the side. I believe that's off to the side. That looks really darn cool. That might be my favorite yeah, ship, but I also like just gigantic fuck off ships. I'm surprised they I don't like have the, any uh... dreadnoughts. You know, that's like kind of a common word for the big one. Mm. Yeah, that's true. I hadn't actually thought about that, but yeah, it's kind of weird they've missed that out, especially given that. Although, then again, given they've already used that for for Space Marines stuff, it might be that even early on they were keen to keep terms separate. Like, mm. maybe. I really like the uh, stylized Aquila at the front too on the on the ram. That looks very cool. Yeah, the, the I mean the battleships are they're just the the coolest Imperial Navy ships. They also, they all follow similar. 
What Sorry, in go God's on. name would you ram this? Like, what would need to be rammed <laughs> by a, a titan of a ship like this? It's still got that big ram in the front, but like, whew. As a, as a, oh my God, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> an emperor, the emperor class? class what the yeah <laughs> what oh, happened to the front gosh. it's the, no I, longer see, for ramming that's for sure <laughs> i don't think i don't think it's fast enough to ram anything i think it's more uh, yeah oh my god there's so many goddamn guns yeah, on yeah look but at all this, the guns on the front the emperor the emperor class is really cool because it's got a bunch of attack craft so it can store like eight squadrons within it and then on the front of it, it's got a shed load of weapons attached. <laughs> so, like, the uh, the Retribution class has got a load of weapons down the side. It's also got a couple of, like, lance turrets and stuff. The Emperor class has got weapons batteries just stuck all over the front of it. It can't really ram, but if it's facing you, then you are in a lot of trouble. You're yeah. in a lot of trouble. <laughs> wow, the artwork uh, that Chai just posted. Oh, my God. Fucking God, amazing! It looks like a porcupine so given cool. given flesh or metal, whatever. <laughs> Look at the yeah. every gun looks like a little spike coming out of it, and just oh Jesus, Jesus. yeah, that that ship doesn't need to ram. But uh, if yeah, like you said, if you're face if it's facing forward at you, you're done. Whew. It's amazing. I love that. I that's I've literally just made that my wallpaper. Anyway, that is like so... peak <laughs> imperial. Aesthetic. It really is. Yeah, it's it's so good. So that's like that's kind of a, an overview of the Imperial Navy. We have talked about weapons a few times. It's worth just mentioning what a couple of those are. So we've talked about the Nova Cannon, the Nova Cannon having the ability to create temporary warp rifts in the middle of enemy ships and the like. Horrific <laughs> weapon. We've talked about lances, which are essentially just vast, souped-up LAS cannons able to fire across extreme distance. They're like sniper weapons. Mm -hmm. But we have mentioned macro cannons a few times. Macro cannons yeah. are basically like the biggest form of auto-weaponry. So you know how the Imperial Guard have got auto-guns and auto-cannons and auto-pistols? Uh, mm -hmm. A macro cannon is kind of the same thing, but a lot bigger. Um, and there's different types of shells they can fire. So generally speaking, when we talk about like broadside weapons on the different Imperial Navy ships, it's usually macro weapon batteries, which can fire either just massive shells that have adamantium cores that cut through armor. There's ones that can overload and shut down electronic systems. There's stuff that fires like plasma-based macro weaponry as well. Mm. It's so kind it, of a. I really so like the in, macro if, cannon strong point. It looks if so there's cool. a, a 40k book and they're on a ship and they're like, "Oh, fire the broadsides," is they're they're basically firing just like all of the macro cannons on the side of the ship. I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, pretty much. Cool. It's just row upon row of these massive, massive guns that fire physical shells for the most part, and. That's also where a lot of like the kind of auto loader stuff comes in. So mm. if you've got like a particularly a particularly valuable ship that's like a relic of a certain age or is particularly difficult to repair, the mechanicum might fit things like auto loaders to be able to load torpedoes or reload the macro cannons. Whereas for the most part, it's fire a shell, a bunch of people who have been taken against their will from some godforsaken planet or are prisoners then loads another shell in and then it fires again that cool is very 40k yeah it really is <laughs> it's great oh shy is a good point what are the uh the, the torpedoes do you have do you have a nature oh, of like yeah, no, one, that's, one or two that's... of those might be out of the 20 so it's honestly it's not yeah, there's, <laughs> there's so many. There are so many different torpedoes. Um, let me get my let me get my list up. Let it's, me get my it's spreadsheet like an, of torpedoes. An actual an actual list, which I've now lost. Honestly, mm. it's not that dissimilar to the macro cannon stuff. If you can think of a if you can think of a thing that you want to be able to do to an enemy ship, 
there is usually some form of torpedo for that. There's usually something that you can find that will that will do the job. I mean, even even like even like Whoa. the lances are like ridiculous. They are basically just gigantic last cannons, but there's different there's different types. So there's like archaeotech versions that have got like ex- like stupid range to the point where the beam can scatter too much to really be all that useful and also requires a vast amount of power to be able to to be able to use. Um so torpedoes, you've got plasma warheads, you've got melter warheads. You have if you really want to be an absolute arsehole, virus warheads. Oh, yes, the virus bombing. Yo, sure. let's go catch up gas. Yeah, you want to make sure that you, uh, you want to make sure that you mainstream. <laughs> you want to make sure yeah. that you capture the ship whole but get rid of all the crew. Virus warhead. Yeah, brilliant. Murder everybody on there. Vortex warheads, which we did touch on briefly. Um, just chuck out a little little torpedo that rips apart the fabric of reality. And we mm. can't forget boarding torpedoes. <laughs> yes, put put people in them and just send put them. Put people in the torpedoes. Yep, yep. That's <laughs> I. To think we could have just glossed over boarding torpedoes when there's I know. a major. <laughs> Also, Major that picture I posted of the size of the torpedoes is just hilarious. Do you mind yeah. if I also, re? Do you mind yeah, if I no, re- go for it. it? Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and I this is and I quote exactly what Shy says. I'm sorry. What the fuck? Psych out torpedoes containing the remains of multiple pariahs and devastate the powers of the warp within their radius. They shoot corpses of blanks at demon ships to destroy <laughs> them. It's like, oh shit. This person has the genetic mutation of being a pariah. Let's take their body and fling them. Hell yeah. That's so... Absolute. That's so so Imperium. It's peak. It's peak 40k, that. Peak 40k. We hate psychers. We hate blanks. Whatever. Stuff their corpses in a torpedo and shoot (laughs) them at demons. Send them away. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) Damn, this psycher's making me feel uncomfy. I have an idea. (laughs) Shoot it at the enemy and make them uncomfy instead. (laughs) Damn. <laughs> I feel like that's uh, the best note to end on, right? Firing yep, yep. the corpses of, <laughs> of psychic pariahs at the enemy. Yeah, is, let's is go. Is it called the psych out torpedo? Because they go up to the blank like, hey, you're going to be in great service to the emperor. You're going to have a great life. And like, really? Psych. <laughs> Stuff them in the torpedo. And shoot. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't buy the furry poster. Oh, buy all of them. Buy there's what two hundred of them you said there's gonna be. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm really one torn. person I is gonna buy two hundred of them. I don't know whether I want you to buy them so that Bricky's wrong, or whether I don't want you to buy them so that DK has to buy all the ones that haven't been bought. I've really put myself in a really difficult position. No, those position are gonna here. sell out. Even the two the two hundred are gonna sell. I how about have no how about you all about commu- like all coordinate with yourselves to buy exactly one hundred. DK, oh, just the amount of a normal DK, true, truce, truce. We send the rest of them to Kiriath. No, truce, I don't want yep, that. We send I don't the rest want that. No, that's no, that's fine. Shy, Great stop, idea. stop the this thing is... now. Stop the thing. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're done now. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Wow, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Finish. Cut that last bit. Mm-hmm.